for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today, we are joined by Basil Ackerman, who works with the CGT Education Union in France. And we are going to be talking about the situation that has emerged in the country after the reopening of a section of schools. France has been one of the countries worst hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. There have been about 180,000 cases, over 28,000 deaths. But the number has come down in recent days and the government in the beginning of the month declared that it would reopen schools. But shortly after the schools were reopened, there were at least 70 cases that were reported from these institutions. And so to talk about this situation, we have with us Basil. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. So first of all, could you first talk about what is currently happening right now? I understand that after there was the spike in the cases, the government decided to maybe shut down some of the schools. So could you talk about the process that led to the reopening and what were the union's concerns about it? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, since two weeks in uh, France, the French government has decided to uh, open the elementary schools in uh, our country. Uh, in my union, we are in opposition with this decision since the beginning because the schools can be the first place to reopen. Uh, all the scientists are agree with that. Uh, and uh, since the beginning, we are worried about the sanitary condition because all the protection like mask, hydroalcoholic gel were not arrived in all the schools. The sanitary protocol to reopen the schools are not validated by the authorities. A lot of, a lot of colleagues are alone in this critical period with a lot of res responsibilities with uh, justice, for example. Uh, my union has uh, received a lot of alerts in my department and the administration doesn't give answer. Um, the families are worried too. Uh, only 15 or 20 percent of the children are present in the schools. The improvis improvisation is total. This solution is chosen by the government just to permit to the parents to go back to the work to revive the economy. Right. Today, um, the, the public service of education is uh, just used like uh, babysitting with the children because it's uh, impossible to continue the education with the very, very little part of children who are present in, uh, in the schools. Right. Uh, in the CGT, we reivindicate that all the protection respects the norms, first of all, and we want test for the workers and the population, of course. Right. So, uh, are the schools that were reopened, have they been shut again, or is there any talk about reopening them again? So, what is happening right now? Uh, right now, it's uh, totally confused because um, we have a lot of meeting with uh, administration mm -hmm. and we don't have answer like uh, I just said before but um, it's very difficult to uh, uh, my union to uh, have answer and uh, give a lot of uh, information to our colleagues um, it's difficult to have a mobilization mm -hmm. because um, we are uh, we work just with the media uh, with internet, with uh, email, with videos, with uh, uh, papers, but it's difficult to meet our uh, the all the teachers in right. the department. Right, right, right. And could you talk a bit about what has been the larger impact of the pandemic on the education sector in France itself, and what have been the union eva union's evaluation of this issue? Um, during the pandemic. All the education workers were in a teleworking, distantial working with the pupils. Mm -hmm. uh, the minister said, we are ready. But for me, nothing was ready. <laughs> and actually, in the French education, all our websites, all our uh, digital tools are insufficient. And a lot of teachers spend money to be uh, equipped with phone, computer, numeric tools or printed tools. Uh, a lot of teachers need to use personal tools like uh, Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp to still connect mm -hmm. with their pupils. But uh, the main question with that is uh, the utilization about the protection to our personal data. Right. And uh, 
the teleworking in the public education in France is not ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, the CGT refused this kind of education because uh, social inequalities are very important with this kind of method. Exactly. And it's, uh, I, I think it's a good opportunity for the private schools and the private media to develop their existence in the education in France. Right. And for my union, we reivindicate a development in the numeric tools, but in the public service. Exactly. So could you talk a bit about the larger sector itself, as in how much of a role does the private sector have in the education in France and what are the kind of areas they're involved in? The, in France, the public service of education is uh, the most important, but with the liberal government, uh, the private schools are uh, in development. Uh, they, with the last uh, education laws, the public, like uh, municipalities, like uh, uh, government, can't uh, give money to the private schools mm -hmm. to uh, to be created, to be developed. So uh, it's a very big struggle in our country to uh, to beat the private school. Right. And uh, also to talk a bit about the situation before the pandemic. So what were the key demands that the unions were raising at that point of time? And uh, especially I think in the research sector, there were some issues that were being raised. And could you talk a bit about how mobilization on those issues has continued during this process? Yeah, before the pandemic, uh, between December and March, uh, the union are mobilized about the reform pensions. Pension reforms, yes. It, it was a liberal reform which wanted to transform our actually system. Mm -hmm. It's a repartition system in a capitalization system. Okay. Uh, it was a big struggle in France. A lot of trade unions, a lot of demonstration with 100,000 participants mm -hmm. every week in the streets, right. in every uh, city in the country. Mm -hmm. The movement was stopped by the pandemic. And now the government has decided to stop the reform project too. Okay. So, because, it, because of the a, pandemic, yes. a okay. little win for, for the unions, mm -hmm. but of course we, we can trust the capitalists. And early or late, they will be back with this uh, social uh, regression reform. Absolutely. And I believe that there was also a strike over, which is, of course, in the research sector, over the LPPR reforms, also, which was a big issue at that point of time. Uh, it's a difficult reform for our colleagues in the university for the research because uh, it introduced a lot of part of private uh, decisions in this uh, part of uh, uh, education. Um, we have a lot of problem with university in France too uh, because, uh, for example, the uh, foreigner students need to pay more right. than before. To be uh, uh, to be a student in France, mm -hmm. so uh, in our trade union uh, we have organized a lot of uh, uh, campaign above this problem. But like the other problems, the government, uh, the French government, can't uh, answer to our trade union because they are liberal and we are not. Exactly. Right. And finally, right now, what are the key demands that the CGT education is putting to the government on the pandemic and also other related issues? Since the beginning, with the Macron's government, uh, we are in opposition with them. Uh, we don't have the same vision of education. Mm -hmm. We want a public education. We can develop the culture. We can develop the intelligence, the autonomy of the pupils to, uh, to, with an obligation to be in school since three years old to 18 years old. And of course, the government can't uh, be agree with that because they want to create a social difference mm -hmm. between pupils mm -hmm. to have they don't want a lot of uh, degrees for the pupils to have uh, uh, workers with bad uh, bad salaries right. and um, 
that's all right thank you so much for talking to us thank you that's all we have time for today keep watching people's dispatch yeah,